Roundabouts, a very simple traffic intersection idea, where cars travel in one direction around a circle, with yield signs for incoming traffic instead of the traffic lights most people were used to. Modern roundabouts were introduced in England in the 1950s, and they began to be widely built across the country after that. In America, the first roundabout was built in 1990 in Summerlin, Nevada, a planned community on the west side of Las Vegas. From there, they started to spread across North America as well, but they aren't perfect for every situation. There are definitely certain roundabouts that are dreaded by locals, feeling chaotic and crowded, and resulting in a lot of accidents, which ends up defeating the purpose of the roundabout altogether, which was likely installed to reduce these accidents and fatalities. Because of this, alternatives have been designed. One of these is the turbo roundabout, a design created to eliminate lane changes, slow things down, and make them run smoother, in turn working as a safer version of the original roundabout design. So today I'm going to give you a bit of info on what this is, why it's here, and why it could be better or worse. Before that though, I wanted to quickly ask if you would please consider subscribing to the channel. We make geography content like this every week, so if that's the kind of thing you enjoy watching on YouTube, I highly suggest you consider subscribing. Thank you. So first of all, and most importantly, what is a turbo roundabout? Well, obviously it has all the basic similarities to normal roundabouts. You still travel around a center island in one direction with yield signs for incoming traffic. For turbo roundabouts though, they have a multi-lane design that uses a radial approach and eliminates lane changing while approaching the circle as well as within the roundabout through a channelization that separates lanes using raised dividers. These dividers come off the ground around a foot and basically work like a curb, stopping you from changing lanes. Now with the center island, this new design removes the circular shape, instead turning it into this weird looking shape, which is where the turbo name comes from. With this design, the big difference is the middle lanes, which run along the inner island. You must go into your required lane, and then take a bit of a sharp turn to go to your required direction. In this design, the inner lane is used to run either straight in the left lane, or to turn left. The design is meant to reduce the speed of traffic, and enhance separation between drivers within the roundabout. This is hoped to reduce the severity of crashes, as well as the occurrence rate. It may also be able to increase the capacity and operational performance. So where did it come from, and where is it popping up in the US? Well, the design originated in the Netherlands, with the first one being built in 2000. It seemed to work, and the design spread across the country in new locations. The Dutch government then developed its own design guidelines, and so the Dutch Turbo Roundabout was created. Present day, there are nearly 300 turbo roundabouts in the small country, and the design began to spread across Eastern Europe in places like Germany. Other countries had options to strictly use the Dutch model or create their own variation of the design. In some places, they experimented with different ways to do it, and there are now several different types of them throughout the continent, with over 380 turbo roundabouts being built. In the early 2010s though, the design was put forward in the US, and it began to be advertised as an option. In places where roundabouts were becoming a problem, and something needed to be done about them, the turbo design was put forward as an option, but wasn't approved. Until finally, Jacksonville, Florida settled on the new turbo roundabout at the intersection of University Boulevard and Merrill Road, a busy intersection just outside of Jacksonville University. The intersection saw between 35 and 40,000 vehicles per day, and it was in a messy spot that was difficult to upgrade. So in 2017, the $2 million plan was approved to construct the first turbo roundabout in U.S. history and it was completed in early 2022, where it has seen successful results in its short life. The project did not see much national attention, being in a less major area, but the design was recently put on the main stage when California began to construct their own turbo roundabout, the second of its kind in the country. This is on a much larger scale, being located at the currently dangerous intersection of State Routes 25 and 156, 
between Hollister and Gilroy in San Benito County, south of San Jose and the Bay Area. The design is different in that State Route 25 is three lanes, so it's even more complicated than the Jacksonville design. This project is being built at the crazy price of $15 million, which I thought was a large sum of money for a singular roundabout. But it shows this is an innovative design, and is more high-end than your average roundabout. So in January 2023, it was finally opened, and the state was applauded on a large scale for building the second turbo roundabout in the country. There are a few concerns from the public about the design, stating some drivers can't even handle a normal roundabout, and throwing them in a possibly more confusing design could be a recipe for disaster. There's also a thought that if you end up in the wrong lane on accident, you'll be forced onto the wrong road. Whereas currently, roundabouts make that mistake easy, because you can just take another loop around the circle or change lanes to get where you want to go. There's also the possibility the small divider won't be enough to stop cars that miss their turn, and they'll just run right over it. All of these concerns have yet to come to fruition, though. We'll see if it shows safer results, or if it confuses drivers and makes things worse. I will say one thing pretty confidently, though. Turbo roundabouts will absolutely begin to spread across the U.S. in places where a simple design does not suffice the needs of traffic. So getting to know the idea and design might be a good idea. So when you're driving and find yourself in a roundabout of this nature, you're not confused. Thanks for watching.